something brighter, give me something I can see. Give me something, bitch, just give me something I can be. In my first impression, I was pretty scared of him. I mean, he was uh, loud, you know, and he was kind of an in-your-face type of guy. Uh, first impression of Jerry was he was a bulldog. Probably one of the most fearful teachers I had in the beginning. He was a big, burly guy and talked really deep, and you always thought you were going to be in trouble with him. Uh, first impression uh, was probably even maybe fear. <laughs> There's this guy. He's, he's, uh, he's tan. He's loud. He's got the biggest calves of anybody around. Uh, he, he knows football. He's teaching you things. He's two or three day, He's two or three steps ahead of you uh, on football, uh, and just trying to catch up to him um, is probably one of the, the first memories that I remember. And that and, and the smell of a pipe. First impressions. He was uh, he's big, scary, mean football coach. That's about what he was. Yeah. I think my first impressions were we were. Uh, he was also whenever I was coming up a junior high basketball coach, and so I pretty much learned he did not really like basketball. <laughs> I mean, he liked football, <laughs> but he coached basketball. That's even called pervert ball. Yeah, I'm sure he was, loved uh, coaching junior high yeah. basketball. Um, you know, uh, kicking sideline markers was a big thing of Jerry's. Uh, if we did something bad, you know, we'd look over there and he'd be over there just stomping on the, the yard markers or kicking the pylon. And We probably coached with him 100, 100 games together. Yeah. And it wasn't one time that a sideline marker no, it wasn't kicked. was not kicked. And we could be up 50 to nothing. And we could be up 50 to nothing. Yeah. Supposedly went out of during a timeout on the field at a JV game and ran over the sideline and kicked a sideline marker and it went straight up in the air and landed on top of his head. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I, if it was true, I'd like to have seen it. Let's put it that way. There's kind of a step-by-step -step with Jerry as the kids will know and the other coaches will know. Normally, the hat goes first. So in fact, there is even one game that you can watch Jerry, Larry, Roger, all throw their hats just boom 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 one day we were having a five on five drill a hole opened up and uh, he used his famous quotes gosh damn it the chinese army could go through this hole do it again <laughs> so we did it again a hole opened up again and we did it again and another hole opened up and he finally got frustrated and when he went to kick stuff he would actually he would more try and stomp on the football coach had a way with kicking things that's kind of his way of you know letting his temper out and he went stomp on that football and he he almost lost his balance and fell over basically you know, yeah. you know. and you know he threw that ball down on the, on the ground and he stomped it this time instead of kicked it well that was a bad move because the, the ball rolled and he went on the ground <laughs> and you know we're all sitting around looking at each other knowing we better not laugh because if we do we're gonna go run 150s and the practice will be over yeah we all kind of wanted to laugh but you really couldn't laugh. I didn't have a problem not laughing because that, that would have been bad if you laughed. So coach always had sayings and they were just off the wall. He, he is a motivator. I mean a motivator through and through and one of his sayings would be uh, you know I want you guys to come off that ball like a raped ape and I'm thinking what <laughs> what the heck is a raped ape? What why would he play football and why the heck does Bainham know what a raped ape would do you know. We always do film, film review and we had a big hit in one of the games, so we knew it was coming up, so everybody was kind of anxious to see it. And right when it happened, Coach Bainham goes, pow, right in the puss. <laughs> and to, to Coach Bainham, that always meant hitting someone in the face. And he always had something to say for any, any event to motivate you. Uh, he would say when we would play Onega or Frankfurt, he'd say, ah, oh, you know, Ron Lee thinks you guys are looking pretty soft. You know, you guys are wearing dresses. and and you don't even lift any weight. You guys just look, Schrader says you look weak. You know, he would say all those things to try to motivate us, but in reality, him and Schrader and Ron Lee were the best of friends. Oklahoma School of Horseshoe looked like the MIT. Yeah. And he said, and I think he may even told one of the managers, hey, uh, go get the kindergarten teacher and see if we can count to three, because you guys missed that lesson back then. Because we could, we'd jump, we'd go three, we'd jump off sides, and he'd, he'd go ballistic. And I can remember us girls coming in and complaining about something and his very first thing he would say is, oh, tales of woe, and the violin this big. And he had, on occasion, been known to put me in a, what he called the chicken wing, and also to spin me around on top of his shoulders if I wasn't doing something that I was supposed to be doing. The reality of the situation when it comes to high school sports is that for most kids, that's as far as they will go in playing sports. So one cannot just focus 
on being a great athlete, one has to also focus the lessons of being a great person and the life skills that they ultimately will use the rest of their life when no longer playing football or basketball or whatever sport is not an option. In today's society, we get worked up on, on um, winning state championships and what your record is. And you know, for Coach Bainham, and it's something I think I personally learned from him was, um, I took in from him, I guess, is that uh, it's how you impact kids and not your record or state championships, but how you impact a kid. And sometimes that's not, won't be seen until years later. And Looking back, I, I really respect Coach for teaching us more than football. He teaches life lessons as he coaches. Yeah, everything he does, you can he's, incorporate into life. He's, and I, I mean, football is important, but it comes down, it's just a game. But the things he taught us, we can, we can take and use our whole lives. Yeah. Uh, taught us how to work hard, no matter what, and to persevere. Um, that hard work always paid off, and, uh, and he was right. He taught us to question things. If we didn't agree with what was going on in the world, then we needed to be questioning it. Um, really prepared us to be adults and to look at the world through not eyes of a teenager, but through eyes of an adult. His, his favorite saying was, you correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, but you're not, there's nobody here going to be an NFL player, but you're going to be a productive citizen. And that's something I think he did a great job with. My freshman year, you know, as you got to know him, he was just an outstanding person. And as time went on, I discovered he was nothing but a big bear, and his bark was way worse than his bite. He always would include everybody, down to the last guy on the team. He, he never belittled anybody. Any good coach or great coach, the ability to both make me like and respect him, yeah. uh, he, had, he had that well accomplished. He would give you some praise when you deserved it, and then he would rip your ass when, uh, when you deserved it too. And he always treated his kids with respect, but he definitely got their attention. On Wednesdays, we'd run defense, and in our JV, it'd be all right. Of course, our JV couldn't, they couldn't do anything. And Coach Bainham finally get upset, and clipboard would be flying, and he'd turn his hat on backwards like this, and um, everything out of his pocket. And he became the quarterback then, and, and he looked at the line and said, hey, but, yeah, 50, 50 years old, old he's out he's running the option quarterback. quarterback. He's, he's optioning down the line and throwing the ball, and we're in the defensive, the starting, the kids on the bark, Steve, you touch me one time, we're doing 150s till it dark comes, and he'd just get upset with the, the JV quarterback. Over the years, many a time, he would come home from football practice with perhaps a black eye. And so I would question him why he had a black eye. Well, he would get out and he would run the plays to either demonstrate or just to work with the boys. But oftentimes, of course, wasn't wearing a helmet or wearing any gear to protect himself. And when he felt that he needed to demonstrate something, it didn't make any difference. He was out there in the middle of the field and he was in the middle of the game showing them what they needed to do. So that has always been part of him. He loves the sport and that's what he does. Working with young people has been what has mattered to him throughout life. He's nowhere near as intense a coach as he was years ago, and I know many of our Centralia kids and Onega kids would probably argue, could a person be any more intense? But believe me, he's maybe half as intense as he used to be. So he's gotten meeker as he's gotten older. When I first arrived in Chanute, as a single parent with two kids. I have since found out that I was probably hired to keep Coach Bainham in town. He had been making noise of leaving Chanute, and so the first night after I had arrived, the assistant superintendent had called to see how I was doing as far as being settled. And I told him I was doing pretty well. I had everything in my house, and I just had a few things to do, like some plant hangers to put up and things like that. He said, oh, well, you need a man to help you. And of course, I was pretty sure that wasn't exactly what I needed. But anyway, he sent Jerry over that night to help me with the finishing touches of the move. And uh, we ended up starting dating from that point on and were married five months later. And, but it didn't work. It didn't keep Jerry and Chanute. <laughs> it only kept him there for two more years. So without a doubt, Jerry, myself, as a teacher, have been blessed with some of the most wonderful kids anywhere. And 
I can go to other communities and I can try to explain what we have here in Centralia, and much so the same for Onega, just in, just in this area of Northeast Kansas. And they can't even begin to relate, but this area has the most wonderful kids anyone will ever want to work with. You know, think about think about coaching. You know, and Coach Bainham was good at. You know, he would yell and yell and yell at kids, and mm -hmm. and you know, but right after practice, you know, he would go and he would uh, you know pat him on the back right after yeah. practice, and he would say, hey, you know, uh, you know, let's come tomorrow, let's have a little better practice tomorrow, and, and you know, and, and leave the kid with a positive. Um, you know, that's that's why today. Um, there are so many people out there that uh, are in support of, uh, of Jerry and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, this, this illness and, and, and pushing for him and pulling for him because, uh, mm -hmm. but he's, he's touched a lot of lives. Yes. I think uh, the biggest compliment to Jerry, and I've got to include uh, Coach Larry Schrader in this, and he's not here today. Both those guys have made me a better coach and made my teams better uh, because our kids respond when we knew we had to get better, and I had to coach better to compete against Jerry's team and Coach Schrader's team. First few times we played him, we were, uh, well, we had a, some, a pretty good football team when he was building his, but uh, after the game, I didn't know if he was going to hit me when he ran across the field or uh, what, but uh, he didn't stay on the field very long after a game when he shook your hand. So uh, with Coach Bainham, after he got him started winning here, there, I mean, there was no letdown, and uh, had a program that was consistent every year. He made smaller players play big. Uh, they were always competitive and uh, that doesn't just come from the community. It comes from the guy that's that's uh, heading them up. But he made me work harder because we had to uh, raise the level we had at Onega or we would have been embarrassed by Centralia and by the Frankfurt team. So it, uh, And that's what I enjoyed so much about coaching against those two, but against Jerry. I mean, when we went at one another, it wasn't so much, well, it was personal. I mean, you take pride in what your teams do and your boys do. But uh, what I really respected is the relationships that Coach Schrader and Coach Batum and I had. Uh, I know I respect Jerry greatly, uh, and I hope he does me. But, uh, you know, you could go at it, and quite honestly, the opinion of you as a coach in a small town changed at times with how you did against the Coach Batums and the Coach Schraders. And, and uh, Jerry's teams beat us a lot uh, and gave us a lot of disappointing losses at Onega. But uh, there, was, there was never any animosity between us, I don't think. I mean, we wanted to, believe me, we wanted to kick one another's rear end personally also. But uh, there was always that respect and, and uh, I don't think there was any ill will uh, from the coaching standpoint, you know, the kids at times could be this, that, and the other, but the coaches, I think, respected programs, and, and hopefully we made Centre better also with uh, what we brought up here when we came up here. The biggest thing I'd have to say is I'd love to have 10 or 20 more years of it, uh, going against him one-on-one -on -one and against his teams one-on-one. -on -one. It made, I mean, being a coach, you get, you get a little emotional, but get, being a coach, it, it, it makes your profession what you do better by coaching against people like Jerry Bingham. And I wished all of us, Jerry and me, would have sat back once in a while and just uh, sat down with one another and say, you know, this isn't bad what we're doing. But at that time, you get wrapped up in everything and you gotta get things done. But uh, I don't know how to say it. You know, I coached against Jerry. I talked to him when we played against one another, things like that. And you get a bond that you get with somebody when you're not there every day with them and things like that. I mean, you, you, you start to understand and know the person even though that you're not working with them day in and day out. Well, one thing, if, if he sees this, one thing I tell him, tell him every, before every game, take it easy on us. And you know, he treated us like, like he was one of our, we were one of his sons. Um, he demanded a lot out of us uh, each and every day. He was a great motivator. Uh, you know, he always found a way to get us up and when we got off the bus every Friday night, he had us ready to play. And one of the strongest motivations, I remember back, um, so before Bainham got here, Centralia's football team was down, way down. Uh, we came in, like I say, at seventh grade uh, with Jerry, and, um, and, and as we were here, the team steadily got better. Well, anyways, by the time we got to our sophomore year, he'd made a bet with the senior group uh, that if you could win either six or seven games in a season, I'll shave my head. 
you know, I'll just shave my head. I mean, that, <laughs> it was one of those motivations. And then I remember uh, that got said very early in the season. And then I remember winning that game. And I remember going into the new gym and uh, and Glassic, or not Glassic, Bainham sitting down and his boy, Sean, would have been a senior that year. Um, Scott Engelkin and different, and Justin Robinson, Casey Robinson, Josh Engelkin, but all those guys grabbing the shears and, and shaving his head. He was a man of his word. He he didn't just say that and think he'd get away with not doing it. He, he said it for motivation and, and then he did it. <laughs> Let's get dressed. There was never a time that 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 uh, we needed something from him that he didn't have time for us. He always had time for us. Um, uh, he was always committed to whatever he could do to help us. Like if if we would lift weights in the morning, he'd come in early to lift weights. You know, you think about your own life. You don't always feel that committed to go help other kids that aren't your kids uh, at all kinds of hours of the day. But he was. He would just go. Uh, wherever he needed to be at to help support his guys. And as, as Trav said before, um, his, his, his kids were his kids. They weren't, you weren't just a football player, you were one of his kids. He's going to protect you, he's going to fight for you. And, uh, and, and I would say that's probably one of the best memories I have of him is that is, uh, he, he's a leader. He didn't, he didn't coach in a, in a dirty manner. He coached in a manner of that we're going we're gonna to work hard, we're going to hit him as hard as we can, we're going to do it fair. Uh, and we're going to win, you know, and that's just the way it was. And uh, I think he's he has graduated a lot of very successful men out of this high school because of, of what he taught them, that you're going to go through life fairly, you're going to work hard, and you're going to su succeed. He is was very instrumental early on because, um, you know, as Dave said, you know, I think sometimes today we, we take going to the state football playoffs and, and getting in the playoffs for granted a little bit. In the early 90s, when, when Coach first came here, that wasn't something that, that this school was used to. We'd gone about a decade uh, before we'd done anything like that. So he helped lay that foundation that I think we're still, we're still reaping benefits from today. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I think the head football coach at, at, a, at a school actually has probably the most impact in the community on, on young men of anybody in the school because you have the most of them um, in your presence, you're leading them, you're guiding them. And, and, and Glassic and Bainham, uh, we've been blessed, you know, here at Centralia with, with great coaches. And like I say, Ron Lee, I have utmost respect for him. These guys lead, and they lead, they lead the men, uh, the, they lead the boys into being men, and those men eventually uh, do great things. And I think there's some great things happening in this community. I can drive it all back from we had great role models growing up. You know, when I was a freshman and one day after practice, we just got done running 12 150s and, and he was pissed at, that we broke the paint machine, or the paint machine was broke. And, and uh, so he, he thought the freshmen are the ones that broke it by throwing the padded pile on <laughs> end of the building. So we ended up running another 18 150s because we broke this steel paint machine. and. I'd just like to let him know that there ain't no way we broke that paint machine. <laughs> yeah, and it's not really a funny story, but uh, Coach Bam always thought that he had the upper hand on us. And uh, just want to let him know that, you know, in his uh, senior year, uh, for some reason he always kept the master key in history of the test in his top <laughs> left drawer. And every morning, test day, you better bet your butt. I grabbed that test key and copied it at the library and then gave it out mm. to the whole class. So, except all the smart ones, and uh, there was one day where the test was pretty hard, and you know your C average student like me, you know, aced it, baby, and uh, the smart ones got C's, and I think Coach started catching on that there was something going around. I always stole the test, so it didn't matter. He knew it, <laughs> and uh, anyway, he makes up the test, and the whole class, the, all the smart ones, got. 40s and 30s and you know me and a handful of the ones that we gave the test to got <clears throat> I, I threw them so I got like a 75 <laughs> to 80 and the rest of them got 80s and 90s and and uh, then he told us what we got and what the smart ones got so we knew he knew we cheated so in the next <laughs> test he grabs a chair and sits right in front of me and 
stares at me. Well, he always gave us points for our name. If we spelled our name right, we'd get <laughs> points. So if there was 50 questions, we would get to make 100, he'd give us 50 points for our name, as long as you spelled it right. So he sits down in front of me, and and I was like, he smiles with a grin, and I was like, how many points are we getting today, Coach, for our name? And he says, you're going to get – or how many questions are there? And I said, well, there's 50. Well, you get 50 if you spell your name right. So I wrote my name on it and handed him the test. <laughs> he taught me how to, if I was going to do it, I mean, I need to do it right. And, you know, I learned a lot from him. Um, just the way I carry myself in life now, you know, day to day. And, you know, I want to thank him for that. Coach kind of really, he really taught you what life was about. And he demanded respect and respect your elders uh, to be kind. You know, it's funny how hard he was on the field, but off the field, you know, he was more on the soft side. And uh, I, I took a lot away from that from coach, just, you know, working hard and hard work pays off. And that was the message he was trying to send to his players. I, I was thinking about coach, and uh, coach never won the big one. Uh, he really wanted to win the big one. And every day in practice and every game, uh, we worked hard. He worked us hard. He yelled at us. And looking back on it, I, I finally get it. You know, coach was prepping us for life. And we, he may not have won the big one, but in my eyes, he did win the big one. He, he did. He impacted so many lives, and that's way more important than any state championship. Coach, thank you. Uh, you've been an amazing man and inspiration to us all. You're such a fighter, and you teach us to cherish every day. And to see you smiling still through your greatest trial is amazing. And we love you, and we wish you the best. You know, he's a teacher, but he didn't have to stay involved in our lives. And uh, he does, you know, him and his wife, Linda, stop by our house and they come see us and are a part of my daughter's life and um, are just friends. I've been through a lot of things and I've always known that I've had him there for me. He's been like a second dad to me. And I, my life has been more because I have had him in my life. Um, just for him to know that he's got a lot of people on his side and, and that he's, he'll get through this seat. If there's somebody that can, he will. First, thank him for putting up with us and <laughs> everything we've done. Yeah. But I don't know, just he taught us to always keep fighting. And I mean, life's gonna knock you down. That's what he always told us. He said, you gotta get back up. And he's been knocked down and we just wanna try to help him back up. And he'll keep fighting. That's exactly right. He's, he's a fighter. He is a fighter. He'll be all right. Just wanna say thanks for the best time, um, you know, going through High school football was great, Coach, and you made it great. La looking back, Coach, I wouldn't want to play for anyone else but you. Thank you. Coach, I just want to say thanks for, for what you've done, you know, for the, um, you know, all the, the football players, um, uh, the, you know, the educators, and really this community for the last 20-plus years. Um, you know, your record speaks for itself, um, you know, but it, it's probably fair to say that um, the impact you've made off the field is far greater than anything you've done on the football field. And that's the, the true testament um, you know, to, to a leader, uh, which is what you are. If we were playing, not playing one another, and we could help against somebody else, we would do it. He, he was always telling me that they were going to have a board meeting and fire him after we, uh, after every, we played. Every Friday night, they schedule a board meeting. Yeah, yeah. every Friday night. It's going to be a 4-3 vote there for a while. <laughs> and we just had a... Had a good time. We were working with kids, uh, trying to influence kids and raise kids. And I really think we've done a pretty good job with uh, their kids and, and uh, Frankfurt, our kids. And I think uh, we have uh, a lot of good kids who have been uh, successful in a, in a lot of ways. I, I think the main thing you want to leave on students, leave on players, is uh, uh, I always told, told them you're going to be football players here for three or four years, but you're going to be citizens for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've coached for my last. Sins go by like stones on a rushing water. We only know, we only know when it's gone. Yeah, the years go by like.
Like the stones on the rushing water We only know, we only know when it's gone Why don't we smile anymore? I'm not okay with Stones on the road.